The youngest of our eruption was a supervolcano eruption that occurred around 74,000 years ago at the site of present-day Lake Toba in Sumatra, Indonesia. It is one of the Earth's largest known explosive eruptions. The Toba caldera is located in northern Sumatra, Indonesia and contains the largest volcanic lake on Earth. The 100 km by 30 km caldera marks the location of a super eruption that occurred around 74,000 years ago and covered most of northern Sumatra in Ignim Bright. Evidence of this eruption comes in the form of ash in marine cores from the Bay of Bengal, Indian Ocean, and South China Sea. On land, layers of ash are found in India, Malaysia, and as far as Lake Malawi in East Africa. The Toba Catastrophe Theory states that the volcanic eruption 74,000 years ago in Sumatra, Indonesia, caused a global volcanic winter of 6 to 10 years and possibly a 1,000-year-long cooling episode and caused a human population bottleneck. In 1998, the bottleneck theory was further developed by anthropologist Stanley H. Ambrose of the University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign. The bottleneck and global winter theories are controversial, but the youngest Toba eruption is the most closely studied supervolcanic eruption. The paper by Stanley H. Ambrose says that climatic and geological evidence suggests an alternative hypothesis for late Pleistocene population bottlenecks and releases. The last glacial period was preceded by 1,000 years of the coldest temperature of the later Pleistocene from about 71 to 70,000 years ago, apparently caused by the eruption of Toba, Sumatra. Toba was the largest known explosive eruption of the Quaternary. Toba's volcanic winter could have decimated most modern human populations, especially outside of isolated tropical refugia. According to the genetic bottleneck theory, between 50,000 and 100,000 years ago, human populations sharply decreased to 3,000 to 10,000 surviving individuals. The Volcanic Explosivity Index, or VEI, is based upon the volume of tephra produced during an eruption. Tephra consists of rock fragments and particles ejected by a volcanic eruption. The scale goes from 1 to 8, and each succeeding VEI is 10 times greater than the last. The spheres in this illustration represent the volume of erupted tephra for some of the most widely known explosive volcanic eruptions. Some eruptions like Vesuvius, which buried Pompeii in 79 AD, Mount St. Helens in 1980, and Mount Pinatubo in 1991 were enormous, but they were very small. Compared to ancient eruptions such as Wawa Springs in Utah 30 million years ago, which ejected more than 5,500 cubic kilometers of tephra. Yellowstone in Wyoming, 640,000 years ago, which ejected 1,000 cubic kilometers of tephra. Or Toba in the island of Sumatra, Indonesia, which ejected 2,800 cubic kilometers of tephra 74,000 years ago. In 2018, Chad Yost and three co-authors wrote a paper saying that the Toba supereruption had minimal effects on human evolution. The full paper is behind the paywall, but the article preview contains the abstract and the introduction. The abstract says, quote, A review of recent genetic studies finds no support for a genetic bottleneck at or near 74,000 years ago. Based on these previous studies and our new paleoenvironmental data, we find no support for the Toba catastrophe hypothesis and conclude that the Toba super eruption did not, one, produce a six-year-long volcanic winter in eastern Africa, 2. Cause a genetic bottleneck among African AMH populations, or 3. Bring humanity to the brink of extinction. End quote. In addition to the PDF that can be purchased, the authors provide an open manuscript version under the Elsevier user license. This increases readership of the paper by allowing people to bypass the paywall, and it may also increase the number of citations. In the open manuscript, the authors say that, quote, Numerous genetic analyses have not detected a bottleneck that coincides with the Toba eruption. In fact, if the source population for the out-of-Africa expansion suffered a severe bottleneck, there should be a poorer linear fit to the decline of heterozygosity with distance from Africa, Hen et al. 2012. With the advancement of whole genome sequencing, the once elusive 100 to 50,000 year ago late Pleistocene human genetic bottleneck is now converging on 50,000 years ago Lipo et al. 2014, Carmen et al. 2015, Melaspinas et al. 2016, and is being attributed to an out of Africa foundry effect bottleneck Malik et al. 2016, 
instead of a population reduction bottleneck, end quote. It is necessary to point out that Yost and the co-authors of this paper say that numerous genetic analyses have not detected a bottleneck that coincides with the Toba eruption, and they reference the paper published by Carmen et al. in 2015. The 2015 paper by Monica, Carmen, and 100 co-authors brought attention to the human Y-chromosome bottleneck that started at the Younger Dryas boundary 12,900 years ago and became most prominent about 7,000 years ago. Figure S5 of the paper shows that the effective population of females to males was 17 to 1 about 7,000 years ago. Garmin and her co-authors attributed the unusual birth ratios to a change in global culture that lasted thousands of years. However, the cold weather of the Ice Age and the younger Dryas cooling event that lasted 1,200 years may have caused a decrease of viable male fetuses as explained by Catalano et al. in a 2008 paper titled Ambient Temperature Predicts Sex Ratios and Male Longevity. Graph S5 of Carmen's paper also shows a sudden change in the female-to-male effective population 74,000 years ago. This corresponds to the time of the Toba volcanic eruption. This graph is not in the paper itself, but in a separate section of supplemental material. The statement by Jost that genetic analyses have not detected the bottleneck that coincides with the Toba eruption is clearly incorrect. The graph in Carmen's 2015 paper definitely shows a sudden decrease in the effective female-to-male population 74,000 years ago. Was this a simple oversight by Jost and his co-authors? Or was this an intentional omission to reach a predetermined conclusion? Why did the peer review fail to point out this discrepancy? It is possible that the authors did not see Carmen's figure S5 because it was in a supplemental section, although that is not a justification for the error. The dismissal of Carmen's graph could have been intentional because Chad Jost and his co-authors had the goal of disproving the Tova catastrophe hypothesis. Section 4.7 of the open manuscript is called a falsified Toba catastrophe hypothesis. It says, quote, since the publication of Ambrose 1998, the Toba super eruption in its proposed six-year-long volcanic winter continues to be cited repeatedly, particularly in introductory paragraphs as a natural catastrophe that brought humanity to the brink of extinction, human populations reduced to 10,000 individuals, end quote. Good quality scientific work cannot be accomplished when the research is approached with preconceived notions rather than by following the data. The conclusion in the paper by Chad Yost and his co-authors that the Toba volcanic eruption had minimal effect on human evolution had some consequences. Professor John Hawkes, who is a paleoanthropologist at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, wrote a blog entry based on the paper by Chad Yost and his co-authors. In the blog, Professor Hawks called the Toba bottleneck hypothesis a persistent myth. This is how inaccurate or biased information from one paper finds its way into social media. The graph in Carmen's 2015 paper shows that there was a substantial change in the ratio of female to male effective population 74,000 years ago. Was this caused by the Toba volcanic eruption? Was the human population reduced to less than 10,000 surviving individuals? The Toba bottleneck hypothesis cannot be easily dismissed as a myth when there is solid evidence written in our genes. The female-to-male ratio increased to 17 to 1 several thousand years after the onset of the younger Dryas cooling event 12,900 years ago. The 6 to 1 female-to-male birth ratio several thousand years after the Toba supervolcanic eruption could also be an indication of a global winter where male human fetuses could not survive gestation. Geologists, anthropologists, archaeologists, and geneticists will need to get together to solve this fascinating puzzle. Thank you for joining me in the investigation of a cataclysm that happened 74,000 years ago. Humans have had to endure numerous catastrophic events in order to survive to the present day. My book about the Carolina Bays is available at Amazon. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel to be notified of future videos about the Carolina Bays and other scientific topics.